Hi everyone, this is YML and today you are going to explore it a bit and instead of explaining why some things happen in machine learning we are just simply explain some you know, concepts in machine learning like some kind of statistical models or I know some training methodologies Okay, and we are going to start, as you might see, with the Conditionist Temporal Classification, or CTC for short. So, let's begin by defining the problem that CTC tries to solve. So, CTC tries to map a sequence X to a sequence Y, and X contains samples like, I don't know, X1 to X2, XM and Y contains samples like Y1, Y2 to YN. As you can see, the length of the two sequences is different. Here we have M and here we have N. And these two has to satisfy the constraint that M is larger or equal to n. However, labeling data in this way is very hard in practice because you would want your algorithm to have a smaller window in order to not miss any characters. And usually in speech recognition, there is a window of 20 milliseconds. So what you have to do like to annotate your audio file in this way is to say that for the 0 milliseconds to the 20 milliseconds we have the character H. From the 25 milliseconds to the 50 milliseconds we have the character A. And as you can see this is a very tedious uh, way of annotating the data. And how you usually annotate the audio files is to simply have an audio file and then you have like a transcription for it, let's say hello. And as you can see, like this way of annotating and training a model perfectly fits the CTC model. Now that we have explained why the CTC is a useful statistical model, Let's see how it computes its loss function. So basically what you have again, let's take the example of the of building a speech recognition system. So what you have is an audio file, okay? And you window it usually with a window size of 20 milliseconds. Okay. And let's say that we want for this audio to predict, to learn that in this audio is the transcription hello. Now let's observe that we have a very small window of 20 milliseconds here. And because this is a, such a small window, usually you can capture like an entire you know, character in it and the output of the CTC would look something like that. Let's say that here we have an H, the first part of the sound H, then we have again an H, then again an H, then let's say that the H sound has finished and we have an A, then an A again, then an A, and so on. So when we collapse all the characters, and remove the consecutive duplicates, we obtain the transcription hello. However, you have to keep in mind that uh, it's not a clear delimitation of like, what the window should be when we are moving from one character to another. So also you could have like for this audio, let's say that again we have this Windows, another like valid prediction would be to have, for instance, like H, H, A, L, L, and so on. 
and when we collapse again like all the characters we again obtain the transcription hello a small observation that you have to keep in mind when working with CTC is that it introduces a new character called a blank character whose role is to not collapse every every like consecutive same character into a single character so for instance if you have here like an O then between these two in a window it should have been like predicted the blank token let's mark it here with epsilon so in order for the predicted transcription to not collapse to like hello and to have this double L over here so finally how you compute the loss function L is to sum over all the predictions possible prediction that collapse to your transcription let's call that set of possible transcription A and you have to compute sum over this set over the product from y equals to 1 to m m again is the length of the input sequence of p of a i given x y this is the input window and this is our predicted character the next question you might ask is okay but how do you generate the set of all possible outputs a well you can do that using a backtracking approach but this is extremely computationally expensive and the way you do it in practice is employing a dynamic programming algorithm the dynamic algorithm works as follows so let's start by using uh, an example transcription for the speech recognition system let's take the word in so we have to transcribe this word and we have an audio file that has five windows let's say let's suppose so one two three four five so this is the audio file so how would the output could possibly look if we had no blank character so we could have something like uh, y followed by four ends okay then another possibility it would be to have two i's followed by three ends then again let's take one more example three i's followed by two ends and so on so in order to generate a valid transcription for our speech recognition system what you have to do is i know take the first character and repeat it by a number of times then you take the next character in our case n and you repeat by a number of times and if you have like other characters you would take those and you would repeat it by i know uh, well, a number of times with the constraint that in the end you have to use all the characters in the transcription however if you add the blank token or the epsilon character as we defined previously then the things get a little bit more complicated because you could have basically that token anywhere in your sequence so for instance like epsilon 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 y n it's a valid uh, prediction that is in the set a oh, and also like epsilon y epsilon epsilon n is another valid uh, transcription so when we are computing all the possible sets we have to take also into consideration these cases where the blank token appears and we if we apply the previous observation the our sequence would look something like that instead of y in so we have an epsilon okay an epsilon 
y epsilon n epsilon and what you basically do you apply this algorithm here so you take epsilon you repeat it a number of times then you take the first character in the transcription you repeat it a number of times then you take again epsilon and so on and so on again with the constraint that you have to use all the characters in the transcription so y and n now to better understand the dynamic programming algorithm let's take this sequence here and let's try let's try to unfold it so basically uh, the node you can start with it's either an epsilon or an y and from epsilon you can go to the next step to an epsilon again or you can go to an y again repeat the character and here are like the time steps here is like the first time step here is the second time step and from y you can go again to an y repeat the character you can go to an epsilon okay but you can also go to an n now from the second step from epsilon you can go again to an epsilon we can repeat again this the blank token but we can also go again to an y okay from y you can go again to y repeat the character you can go again to an epsilon and you can go to an n nothing new here so from this epsilon where we can go we can go to an epsilon again repeat the character and you can go to an n okay and from n you can go to an n repeat the character but you can also go to an epsilon uh, here we can go to another node because yeah we have already like the maximum sequence here all the nodes in this sequence uh, let's put a 2 here to mark the step in our sequence okay so at the third step what we can do well we can go from epsilon we can go to y we can go to epsilon because then we would run out of slots to where to put the uh, the rest of the characters in the sequence because if you we were like to go here to an epsilon basically we have only like i know a step remaining and we would like could go like to i know either y or n we couldn't put like both of those characters so yeah we have to go to the y from y we can go repeat a character and go to an y go to an epsilon and go to an n from epsilon again we can go to an epsilon and we can go to an n there is no problem and from n we can go again to an n or to an epsilon nothing stop us here to go and from epsilon because it's the end of the sequence we can go only to an epsilon in this case for the last step here i will mark it with four we have only two ending nodes and these are the n and the epsilon so from y we have to go to the n because we have to put this character in our prediction from epsilon we can go only again to the n from n we can go either to n repeat the character there is no problem or we can go to epsilon and from epsilon we can go only to epsilon and what you can do when you compute the probabilities here you can go manually through all of these sequences like that or i don't know like uh yeah like that and so on and for each of them you would compute like the probabilities 
for the probability for each sequence. But as you can see here, like here is like an overlap between the two where we compute the same thing twice. The dynamic algorithm removes this redund redundant computation by going step by step. So this step, this step and so on and making use of the previous computation. So we just look like the previous states of our graph, the previous probabilities. So to compute the probabilities for a node in the graph, we have to look at two cases. The first case, case one, is when we look backwards to only two nodes. So basically we look at either a of t minus one and s for an for a node again a of t and s and we also look at uh, a of t minus one and s minus one and this can happen in two situations two situations uh, when we basically are looking at an epsilon node and as you can see here we can come only from an epsilon looking backwards or from the node in the the node above but there is also like a special case for instance if we have like i don't know an a node an epsilon node and again an a node you can see that like these two characters are the same and we look at the A character. Uh, well, we can't go like that because we have to take into consideration the epsilon node here in order to take care of the possible duplications in the transcription. And the second case, case two. In this case, we consider these two nodes, but we also consider a of t minus one and s minus two. And this case happens when we are in a node that contains a character that is not epsilon and the character before it that is not an epsilon is also not the same character. So, for instance, here n is a case where we take into consideration the previous node at the same state, the previous node with the state above, and the previous node with two states above. Here is the y. Finally, I would like to discuss some of the drawbacks of using CTCL. So, let's take again the example of using uh, CTC for the speech recognition system. So we have an audio file and we window it. And let's say that for the first window, we get the most probable character to be an H. When you go to the second window here and you predict the second character, uh, this prediction over here is independent of this pre prediction at the previous step and this is pretty bad because it makes like I know sequences like I know H keep or H Q equally likely with something like I don't know H E because again it doesn't take into consideration what was like before it only what is given in this window However, this problem can be mitigated by using a language model whose role is to basically give a bias of the prediction using, I don't know, the language that we wanted our prediction to be made on. So basically what it will say, it will decrease the probability of like having a Q or uh, K and increase the probability of having an A because I you know words like heap or hello are much more likely to be uttered in a 
audio file. So after watching this video, I hope that you've got a better understanding of how the CTC model works and how it leverages dynamic programming to speed up the computation together with the conditional independence problem and a possible solution to it.